Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the orchestra and the different arrangements of instruments that were used throughout the years. Please use the following slides and videos embedded in the form to answer the questions. Our focus is going to be what instruments are used in the orchestra and how has it changed over the years. Your exit assessment will be linked in the slides as well as listed on the Google Classroom. In this first slide, we see a picture of the Baroque Orchestra. In the center is a harpsichord, which is a type of keyboard instrument with strings inside and picks that actually pluck the strings. So it gives you a different feeling than the piano. It is also the predecessor to the piano. First off, we have violins, first and second. First will play the melody, second will back them up. Violas, which play parts of music that back up the violin melody. Cello and bass instruments, which play lower sounds. All music is written in the bass clef and they offer support for the melody. You also have natural trumpets, which were the first kind of brass instrument, timpani, which is a pitched percussion instrument, and bassoon and oboes, which are the first woodwinds. In our Mozart composition, you will not notice these instruments. So you will not see woodwinds, brass, or percussion. We're going to listen to Einklein Nacht music, movement one, which is the Allegro. The Allegro movement is named after the tempo or speed of the piece. The genre is a serenade. The time period is Baroque. Good, I'm still recording, ha <laughs> ha. All right, next slide. We're looking at the classical orchestra. And we're going to notice something really important has changed here. Instead of a piano or harpsichord, we have a conductor. So I want you to think about what the conductor does and think about how that might have, that role have, might have been played by the harpsichord, right? The conductor is going to lead all the music around, whereas in the previous time period, that like direction was taken from an instrumentalist, which was a harpsichord player. So we're going to see difference in both the size and arrangement of this orchestra. You have our violins together in first chair and second chair sections. Once again, lead melody, backing melody. We have the violas that use tones on their instruments to support the melody. Then we have our bass instruments, cellos and double basses. We'll see the amount of these instruments has increased as well. When we look at our brass section, we'll notice that it has expanded to both trumpets and horns placed on different sides to get different feelings when each is played. We'll also see flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons, which is an expansion of the woodwind family in this orchestra. And we'll also see an expansion of the percussion family by multiplying the amount of timpanies. This is to add more dramatic effect and percussion to a piece. We're going to listen to Beethoven's Symphony No. 9, which is known as the Ode to Joy Symphony. The genre is called symphony. And what symphony actually means, it comes from the Italian genre sinfonia, which means without sound or sorry, without phonics, without vocals. So it was a piece of music just dedicated to showcasing instruments, not vocals. And in this piece, the time period that we have it written in is the classical era. Lastly, we're going to look at the Romantic Orchestra by listening to a piece called the 1812 Overture by Piotr Tchaikovsky. An overture is a grandiose or very embellished introduction to a larger work. So meaning like a whole concert or a whole play can have an overture. We're going to listen to the end of this overture. The 1812 overture is one of his most famous pieces for the added effects in the end of the song. So I urge you to listen to the whole piece. When we look at the orchestra, we're going to notice that the size of it has increased dramatically. Our first and second violins are in the same position, but now have grown in amount. Our violas 
are in the same position, but have also increased as well as our cellos and basses. So we have a very large string section, which creates a very large sound. We also have harps and pianos in our string section, and the piano is not the leader, the conductor is. In our woodwind section, we have flutes, oboes, piccolos. Those are, piccolos are smaller flutes. In our horn section, we have French horns and English horns. In our brass section, we even now have tubas, trombones, and trumpets. In our woodwind section, we have different kinds of clarinets and bassoons. And in our percussion section, we have more timpanis. We have the addition of a bass drum, a gong, a snare drum, crash cymbals, a triangle. We also see a xylophone and we also see bells. Can also have some kind of chimes too. So you notice the Romantic era is the largest era, but that music also had the most dramatic sound and thick textures in like the sound. You'll notice as you compare it to the Baroque era. And here we go, just lastly, this will guide you through the list of time periods. It has the name of the period and the years that the period took place. We're focusing here on Baroque, Classical, and Romantic. So just match those in the last questions with the year and composer that we looked at. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoy the music, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. Have a great day, and I'll see you next week.